This news update is brought to you by. This is a 6 p.m. Barbados Today update for Friday, September 5, 2014. A warm welcome to you. I'm Kmart Jordan. Good evening. We begin with news of a shooting incident aboard a route taxi this afternoon. Lawmen are investigating the circumstances in which an unidentified man was shot in the back following an altercation aboard a route taxi from Route 10, which plies the Silver Hill Gall Hill route. The incident occurred on Lower Colum Rock around 12.50 p.m. and resulted in both the driver and passengers fleeing the scene on foot. Police Public Relations Officer Inspector David Welch says the motive for the shooting is still unclear. Inspector Welch also reports that the victim has been detained at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital where he is awaiting surgery. That man would have, along with other passengers, would have ran from the ZR, rope taxi, uh, a few feet away and he collapsed a short distance here. He was taken to the QEH by ambulance and that is where he has been detained and I've been told that he's to undergo surgery. From our information, he received the gunshot injury to his back. Um, that's the stage of the investigation at this point in time. He was shot well in his head? Yes, from our information, he was shot well in his head. That's where the altercation occurred to the rear of his head. So the news of the day, good news for people hoping to sell renewable energy to the Barbados Light and Power Company Limited under the Renewable Energy Rider. The Fair Trading Commission has decided to increase the current capacity under the RER program from 7 to 9 megawatts. This means that the BLMP can buy more electricity under the program. However, while welcoming the development, the Barbados Renewable Energy Association, or BRIA, said today it would have liked to see the overall capacity of the BLMP raised to 20 megawatts. BLMP has also acknowledged the FTC's ruling while pointing out that there are already some 500 customers participating in the RER program. The company also says it remains mindful of the risk associated with the program, adding that its focus is to protect the stability and safety of electricity services for all Barbadians. Meantime, the National Association, that should be the National Organization of Women, is not convinced that the 24-hour system will work in Barbados. Recently, Minister of International Business Donville Innes proposed that such a system be implemented to help create jobs and stimulate more economic activity. But the now president, Marlon Rice Bowen, tells Barbados today the move needs to be carefully thought out, especially as it relates to women. We keep calling for an extension of the day nursery hours because you can't close a day nursery at five and I work in the supermarket until nine o'clock. So if you want to move towards a 24 hour um, working, a 24 hour day working, there are so many social brackets you have to put in place, some of the things you have to attend to before you can look at that. I also don't know, so I, I don't know where they're coming from with it, but do we have the population to support a 24-hour-a-day thing. It might work excellent in Trinidad and in Jamaica where their population is, is bigger, but I don't know, maybe they're doing studies that we have not been privy to. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I'm Red Plastic Bag. Anyone who knows me knows I don't like coal. Sunshine rains in my country. I love it.
to sport now a patient 123 from opening batsman Craig Brathwit, as well as half centuries from Darren Bravo and Chris Gale, propelled the West Indies to 264 for three at the end of the first day of the first test against Bangladesh, playing at Arnest Vale in Kingstown, St. Vincent. Earlier, Bangladesh won the toss and inserted the West Indies, a decision which they lived to regret. First, Gale and Brathwit added 116 for the first wicket. And this was followed on by another solid partnership of 117 between Brathwith and Bravo. But after a fourth interruption from rain, play was halted for the day in the 87th over. To news now from the region, investigations are underway into a small plane crash just north of Jamaica earlier today. According to a military spokesman in Kingston, the U.S.-based plane, a TBM-700, with an unresponsive pilot on board, went down about 14 miles northeast of Port Antonio. Up to news time, it was unclear how many people were on board, but a military aircraft was sent in to investigate the crash. The six single-engine aircraft took off from Rochester Airport at about 8.45 a.m. en route to Naples, Florida, but the pilot stopped responding to radio calls at 10 a.m. We will continue to monitor that, monitor that unfolding story. Internationally, another Ebola-infected American doctor is flown back home for treatment. Dr. Rick Sacra, who is also an aid worker, contracted the deadly virus while working in Liberia. Dr. Sacra worked at the same hospital where infected Americans were stationed. But he was not treating those infected with Ebola, but rather delivering babies and treating other patients. He arrived in Nebraska today and will be treated at a special isolation unit in Omaha. And on that note, we end this week's updates. We'll be back again on Monday morning at 7 a.m. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb. Subscribe to our e-paper or like us on Facebook for the very latest news and sports. You can also catch us on Izumi Media in bus terminals or via screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. I'm Kmar Jordan. Have a fantastic, wonderful and safe weekend. And we'll see you again first thing on Monday morning. This news update is brought to you by... Hey! <laughs>